something that I actually did write for uh, for Jackman, uh, which was about uh, Cornell West, who uh, has recently declared that he is running for president. And when he, uh, is, you know, when he originally did it, he said he was going to run as the candidate of something called the People's Party. And if your response to that is "What's that?" then congratulations, uh, you're not terminally online. Uh, continue to live your life as you have thus far lived it, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna add to your burdens by telling you. Uh, and um, but then uh, he he switched to uh, the Green Party, which was you know probably a good move. Uh, has a lot less baggage, uh, has uh, has a lot more ballot access. So relative to the decision to run a third party campaign, that makes sense. But the point that I was making in the article, it's called. Cornell West should challenge Joe Biden in the Democratic primaries is that if he's going to do this, and I think there's a discussion to be had about, you know, whether, you know, this is even the best use of the man's considerable energy. But if he's going to do this, I think that he should, you know, he should do it in a way that's not going to be unnecessarily self marginalizing. Like, I don't think, you know, I could be wrong, but. I don't think in 2016, I don't think most voters knew who Jill Stein was. Um, I don't think in 2020, most voters knew who Howie Hawkins was. In fact, I don't think some people watching this show right now know who Howie Hawkins is. I voted for Howie Hawkins and I don't know who he is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's like, I, you know, here's the, here's the green party candidate. He's like, I mean, if if you're like, if you were tuned into the right kind of lefty stuff like 20 years ago, you might know who he is. But like uh, now, obviously, he's much less of a star than, you know, he and Jill Stein were both, you know, who was the Green Party candidate in 2016 and before that, 2012, uh, started out with much smaller profiles than Cornell West. That's true. I mean, Cornell West, um, every few months I remember this and I'm kind of delighted and new by it is that was um, in both of the Matrix sequels. Uh, he was playing himself essentially. He was Counselor West in uh, the Matrix Reloaded and the Matrix Revolutions. Cornell West is forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I love How, it. Wasn't, wasn't Howie in Speed Racer? Or it's just that movie's less popular. So <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have a little cameo. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think Cornell West is like a much more plausible candidate, but I think that he's. Uh, but I, I still think that, you know, most voters just aren't even going to know who the Green Party candidate is, right? I mean, that, um, you know, I think that, uh, I think if Bernie Sanders, uh, had, uh, had, had gone that route in 2016, you know, I don't think he would be the household name that, that he is, which he really was not in 2015 outside of Vermont, right? You know, he, he really, really wasn't. Like there was like a little bit of notoriety because of his filibuster a few years before, but uh, yeah, and the Tom Hartman program like like uh, would have him on like once a week uh, for a while there. Yeah, my, um, I mean, like honestly, the main reason I know who I knew who Bernie Sanders was many years before that was because my grandmother. I and I think this is actually incorrect, but uh, my grandmother was convinced uh, that uh, that that Bernie was like a distant cousin or something. And like she had this whole genealogical thing, uh, so I was like, um, so that's the main reason I knew he was uh, before 2015. <laughs> but like most people didn't really know who he was. If you go back and watch Bernie's original announcement press conference in 2015, uh, he literally has the speech on like a piece of paper that's folded up in his jacket pocket, and he's talking to like ten reporters. Um, <laughs> you know, guy did not have a giant profile, and he was a U.S. senator. Uh, and, you know, I, I think if he'd run in the Green Party, like, we might actually not be, you know, I mean, Bob Barr ran as a libertarian, right? You know, that, that he started out in a similar, uh, that happened once, yeah. Uh, that's, um, like, I think from Congress uh, already. So, like, I think that this is just a very marginal way of doing it, which is unfortunate because I'm actually a huge Cornell West fan, and I, I have been for a very long time. Um, I... You know, I was, uh, I mean, I, I like met him once for like 30 seconds. We, you know, like I was starting a panel and then the panel he was on was ending and I like shook hands with him backstage and we talked about Michael Brooks for 30 seconds. You know, that that's the subtotal of my interactions with, uh, with Cornell West in person, but he's, um, but you know, I've, I've been reading his stuff since, 
you know, forever. Right. You know, since, uh, like, uh, definitely, you know, like, you know, 20 years easily. Right. Uh, and you know, huge fan. I think he's somebody who has a real track record on, uh, all of the issues that he's talking about with the campaign. I think he's somebody who not only has the right positions, but manages to communicate them in a way that, uh, conveys this like really compelling moral vision. Um, I like the guy. I will happily vote for him for president on any ballot line. I live in fucking California, right? So don't come at me with the spoiler stuff. Uh, that's, but, um, but I, I think it's a mistake to, to run in a way that most voters won't notice. And uh, if he's going to run, and again, you could question whether, whether he should, but like if he's, if he's going to run, I think he should do it in where he could have the biggest possible megaphone and get them potentially, right? There's no guarantee, but, you know, potentially like get the most spotlight, which would be challenging Biden for the Democratic nomination. The argument of the article is that, you know, it's not a question of like, do you love the two party system or not? I certainly don't. I'd be much happier if we were like a regular democracy that had several parties that like all had seats in the country's parliament or whatever, and, you know, um, competed and occasionally formed coalition governments and all that stuff. That would be way better. But it's, but I'm not convinced that there's a path there from running like 1% of the vote kinds of, uh, kinds of mostly symbolic candidacies. And, and that's my, my critique of, of him doing it this way right i mean he's got my vote regardless but i think that he's i think he would um you know i mean look if if joe railway labor labor act biden donald trump and former michael brooks show guest cornell west are the three options on the ballot right i'm obviously voting for cornell west uh but uh but i i think that he but i think he's he's doing himself a disservice by uh by running this way and I, I just don't i just don't buy the idea that if we ever got electorally viable third party we would get it through this kind of act of will that you know like a sort of small number of leftists running these mostly symbolic campaigns i think i think it would come if it came at all the way that lincoln's republican party emerged in the 1850s from um kind of the contradictions within one of the major parties spilling over uh like the anti-slavery wing of the wigs in that case that would be my take, but I, I would be curious what you guys think about this. Mm, so, yeah, it, is that his logic? Is that he just wants to inject the idea of the po- that there's a possibility for a, a third party? Is that has he? Is that kind of his idea? Well, I, I think he's actually spoken a little bit to this. Uh, so uh, we we do have a clip of uh, oh, okay. Cornell uh, being. Uh, in an interview, uh, actually being, I mean, being asked among other things about the article that I wrote. So we have the, uh, with clip. I'm going to ask you this question. What will your response be? Cause we don't, we not even give legitimacy to none of these ridiculous liberal arguments. What, what will your argument be to people that say you should run as a Democrat? <laughs> what will you say to people that say, Oh man, I like Dr. Cornell West. I like his policies. You know the important stuff, but I'd rather you run as a Democrat where they don't support your policies. So, yeah. what would you what would be your response directly to people like Ben Burgess and the progressives like Ro Khanna and Bernie Sanders who say that you should run as a Democrat? Yeah, I just tell them that uh, um, I mean the Democratic Party has a rock at the core of it, and the corporate wing protects it. And the progressive wing is a kind of window dressing every two and four years to try to bring people in. But if you look closely at the policies and the priorities of the Democratic Party, it has been tied to Wall Street, it's been tied to Pentagon, it's been tied precisely to the things that Brother Martin told us to fight, which is put a stress on poverty. They have hardly little at all. I give Brother Biden credit. Child poverty cut in half with the relief bill. Very important. The bill expires, child poverty goes right back again. Let's me know they have no commitment. Same would be true with militarism. Militarism always already increased. In fact, they even get vote more than Biden asked for. So that in that, that's the kind of rot that sits at the center of it. We haven't even gotten to surveillance yet. We haven't even got to 
uh, uh, the, the fossil fuel industry and, you know, you can make deals with, uh, what's the brother's name in West Virginia, always standing in the way? Joe Manchin, the rotating villain, Joe Manchin. Yeah, exactly. So you can make a deal with him for the pipeline going through working people's okay. spaces, eco contributing the ecological collapse. But when it comes to voting rights, the black folk who put Biden in, especially the black sisters who put him in, you don't want to touch the filibuster because you don't want to antagonize him. You can't make a deal when it comes to voting rights of black folk, but you can make a deal when it comes to his pipeline. That's that's if that doesn't expose the priorities of a bankrupt Democratic Party, what else does? And we still haven't got to the fact that those precious brothers and sisters on the West Bank, do you think they ever conceived of the Democratic Party being any different than Republican Party when they dealing with the bombs <laughs> yeah. of the Israeli Defense Forces? Yeah, uh, I saw somebody in the chat saying uh, Brandon just got promoted to brother. Uh, he, he calls everybody brother. It's, you know, I mean, brother Trump. It used to be brother Bush. You know, everybody's <laughs> everybody's brother. Uh, <laughs> so I, I actually, uh, I, I mean, I, honestly, I, I kind of I always kind of enjoy that about him. Like, I, I remember when he was on TNBS, um, there was a uh, there was a point they were talking about you know, that was back when the intellectual dark web branding was big, you know, for Jordan Peterson and Ben Shapiro and all these guys. And Michael, you know, read the book about it, obviously, uh, against the web. And they were talking about that. And I remember Cornell West saying, like, what I remember thinking at the time, I was like, man, I'll be, I guess this is about the meanest Cornell West is capable of getting. He was like, these are the, these are the deepest brothers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I thought it was an interesting clip uh, for a few reasons. Uh, one is that I, and I'm sure I'm guilty of this too, but um, you know, I'm, I, I'm on the side of it that he probably, or my initial idea uh, conception would be that he probably, if he runs, should probably run in the uh, democratic primary. So when the hosts are kind of just laughing and dismissing the idea that yeah. anyone would ever do that, that didn't make me really want to come to their side. So it was a good, it was like a good uh, test mm -hmm. case that when someone is mocking your opinion and not really steel manning it, you're like, okay, are they really taking what I think seriously? Well, and they're then, still guilty about the wedding too. Well, okay. <laughs> Whatever, but I, I guess the the, on, the only problem is, I mean, I think that that clip showed you know how effective of a communicator Cornell West is, but uh, you know people like yourself that think that he should run uh, in the Democratic primary agree with all of that, right? And still think no, I, that the best I way to challenge the, is the best way to challenge it is actually running like from the inside. So I feel like we're not really getting at the heart of the debate when you go on a long speech about how there's a rot at the core. If you want to argue that that rot is so bad that even collaborating or or or, or you know doing anything with them is not worth it, like it's a, like the, maybe maybe it feels like the Nazi party, you know, it'd be like well, I'm not even gonna run, you know. But uh, obviously, there's there's different levels of nuance here, and like you know, I, I think you got to make your pitch then to people who agree with that that the Democratic Party is you know basically a rotten corporate institution. But given that, is is this Green Party run really gonna? confront it effectively because if anything if we hate the democratic party we want it to be uh you know have, have a better challenge than, rather than like an ineffective one yeah um i mean i guess yeah i my thoughts are almost exactly the same i mean after like really the first like 10 seconds of that answer was the part that was actually speaking theory of disagreement after that it's 100 percent agreement Right. Like that, the that like everything he says about child poverty, everything he says about the, you know, you know, kowtowing to Joe Manchin, uh, about the Palestinians, militarism. It's like all of that 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent. But the question, again, is that message that he articulates so well there. Right. Like, uh, are are you going to deliver it in a forum where more people are to hear it? Uh, or where where fewer people are are going to to hear it, um, and you know, obviously, you know, actually, like get in, you know, Brother West in the White House would be a immensely long shot in the best of circumstances, right? But um, but if you if you were going to to do that, right? I mean, like 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 okay, where where is the uh, you know where is it the longest shot, you know, or the slightly less uh, less long shot? Would also be a uh, would also be a relevant question.
question. I mean, like he, like the part, um, you know, and I mean, saying that, you know, well, I hate these people so much, I'm not going to challenge them for the one alt line where we're like, you know, that uh, you could be on potentially that with that uh, most people are actually going to know about, you know, like, like doesn't, doesn't really quite add up to me. Right. It's a, again, I think the moral case against, you know, the Joe Bidens of the world uh, is, is rock solid. That's absolutely correct. Uh, But uh, you know, the, really the part of it that addressed, you know, kind of before he got on all that other stuff, the part of it that addressed the, the point was, well, okay, there's this rot in the corporate Democratic Party and the progressive wing just brings people in at once every two to four years. And the point I make about that is that it's actually the mirror image of the point that's made by people who um, who don't want him to run at all. Like Joan Walsh um, wrote an article at The Nation where she said uh, Cornell, it's like actually called something like Cornell West should not be running for president. I linked to it in mine. And one of the things she says in there is even if you were running as a Democrat, it would be bad because it would like weaken Biden in the general. And the the Walsh argument is one that's actually pretty common for liberals to make. Because that, you know, it's like, well, you know, if you have a heated primary, then you know, some people will still be so pissed off that, you know, they won't vote for, you know, candidate the general. And it's like, well, isn't that the mere image of the of uh West argument? in the clip that we just like those first 10 seconds, of the clip, they say, well, they bring people in. Like in both cases, the idea seems to be that once you've done this, once you're challenged in the primaries, the, the later decisions of voters about what they're going to do with the general are just sort of baked into that from the court on West perspective, the decision that's baked in is voting for Biden in the general election and the Joan Walsh version, the decision that's baked in is not voting for Biden in the general election, but like, I don't know. I kind of think that voters are grown ups, and you know, you should trust them <laughs> to to make up their own minds about this. They can they can come to their own determinations about what makes sense, you know. And you know, like I think that might vary by state to state. Since, like, again, I I think um, like I actually did when I said I'd, I'd vote for Cornell West regardless on Twitter. I actually did get people mad at me. I guess they think that uh, Donald Trump is going to win California's electoral votes. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, 2024, but it's like, yeah, people can make their own decisions. I see no reason to sort of paternalistically worry that you're going to be like indirectly influencing those decisions. I think that you should just do whatever makes the most strategic sense. That would be my argument. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. And uh, the last thing I, I agree uh, that uh, when I was talking about the off-putting way of talking about it, that was really more from the hosts and from West. I mean, I think sure. to your point, Cornell's uh, uh, calling everybody brother and his general, uh, just like polite respect. He was just like, this is what I would say, you know? And I think uh, he, he, which is a good politician thing, I guess, which is to deflect toward uh, something we can kind of all agree on. <laughs> but uh, well, it's uh, also, I mean, I actually also think it's just good for everybody like political communication that um, like, you don't actually need to, um, you know, like sometimes you might do it anyway because the person deserves it. And, you know, like, uh, but like, you know, if it's like, oh, Rokata said blah, 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 you know, you don't actually need to start your answer with, well, fuck that guy. But, you know, <laughs> like, you, could just, you could just say, well, the reason I, I disagree is blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you don't need to be like rolling your eyes and like smoking <laughs> a cigar. Uh, sorry. <laughs> <I'm>, uh... <laughs> Yeah, uh, I guess. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, I guess the best for what w- what you're saying, Ben, is the best that Cornell can do. Well, the best, sorry, the best Doctor West can do is uh, is just get exposure. Basically, I mean, he is, I think, one of the best public yeah. speakers, maybe yeah, who's ever, ever. You know, I mean, definitely of my lifetime. So I guess just for him to get out there as much as possible is that's the biggest win. So uh, yeah, I think I, I think I agree. I mean, I don't know. I guess I kind of see his logic of maybe like yeah. just like hinting at like, hey, we should be thinking about an entirely new party. I I totally get that, but sure. <clears throat> I, th- I I I I I I I'm pretty sure I agree. Just like getting him out there with his message as much as much as public because yeah, you're not gonna hear too much from the Green Party, right? I mean, it's just you're not gonna hear nothing. So just to get get Cornell out there, you know, with his, 
with his message, his understanding of politics and his great public speaking ability is probably that's the win. Right. And, and, and I worry, uh, to your point that actually all of these like marginal third party runs actually enforces the opposite point in people's head, which is that these parties are just kind of like, you know, outside fringe joke type of things. I feel like if you talk to the most Democrats or even conservatives, they wouldn't really take any of, of you know, any party outside of the main two parties seriously. So they, they take uh, votes away is their argument. Yeah. Yeah. Which is right. like, which is not really something I ascribe to, but I do. Yeah. It doesn't really. I, I mean, I think most of the people who vote for uh, Cornell and, uh, and the Green Party would probably stay at home rather than uh, go out and vote. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not really yeah. too like concerned, like the whole spoiler thing again, I, I just, I'm just not that hot and bothered about that. Like for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that I, I think Andy's right. I mean, even the factual premise is a little dubious, like, um, you know, my, not where I'm now, my home state in Michigan, uh, went for, uh, you know, like, you know, those had very, you know, it was always officially been a swing state, but like it, it went Democrat every election for like 20 years, like, you know, some like really like notoriously genius level campaigners like Michael Caucus and John Kerry managed to win Michigan and, um, and Hillary Clinton managed to pull off losing it, uh, which is, you know, impressive. Uh, but, uh, but in like, and so people was like, Oh, see Jill Stein got more votes in Michigan than the difference between, you know, between, uh, you know, Hillary and Trump, it's like, yeah, okay. But like Mickey Mouse probably got more than Jill Stein, you know, from write-ins like that's, Mm -hmm. uh, like, I think you guys are missing the, the larger point. Like people had, and like, certainly there were way, like for every Jill Stein vote, there were probably like three ballots that just had the top blank. Because because uh, people voted for down ballot offices, but they couldn't bring themselves right. to vote for Clinton after NAFTA and all that stuff, mm-hmm. and its effect on the state, and um, and and also of course the most the most popular route for Democrats who wanted to express their dissatisfaction with Hillary Clinton was just to vote for Donald Trump, right? Like that's so it's like this like you're just hyper focusing on one of ten ways that people are expressing their dissatisfaction, and also like I say this in the article. Um, like I don't, I have this whole thing where where like voters are demonized for like not being able to bring themselves to vote for you just seems ass backwards to me. Like I think that the the job of the politician is to appeal to voters. Like it it always reminds me of that uh, Bertolt Brecht poem after the um, there's like a general strike and uprising in in, uh, in East East Germany in 1953 and afterwards it says at the beginning of the poem the party put up uh, flyers, you know, saying that people would have to work twice as hard to prove their loyalty. And so the last line of the poem is, wouldn't it be simpler for the government to dissolve the bullet elect another? Like, it's like, no, it's the, you're, you know, <laughs> like voting, like your job is to get the voters to vote for you. You know, it's, it's not like, you know, complaining that voters didn't do what you wanted is, is just not at all how this should work. I know that, that is the really sad part when people are like, don't even think about voting for this guy who's a way, way better candidate, obviously. Don't even think about it. I mean, don't even talk about it because <laughs> then this other guy who nobody likes might not win. You know, it, it is. It's like, I don't know. I mean, we talk about so much economically about choice and all that. It is sort of weird that for people mm. to talk this way about what's supposed to be very important and democratic for there to be – so anti-choice you know it's it is it is bizarre i mean it's obvious but it is a sign of what's going on with electoral politics i guess yeah i I mean again like if somebody says hey like if somebody who lives in one of the tiny handful of states that could actually make a difference the outcome once by like tactical advice i will give it but like scolding that person for not doing what you wanted them to do Again, I, I'm just not remotely on board with that. Um, and it's the same thing, too. I mean, honestly, I think liberals and ultra leftists both over moralize what people do in the voting booth. Like, it's like, oh my God, you sheep, you voted for the Democrats. It's like, well, okay. I mean, like, people have bad choices. They're going to, like, mm-hmm. make their calculations about how to address those choices. I mean, honestly, the whole thing is kind of a diversion from arguing about how to. Uh, 
how the left can have a big enough impact in order to change what choices people are presented with at the end there, which again is why I think, you know, I mean, look, uh, cards on the table. I don't think, I don't think we're going to get president West regardless, but, um, but if, I mean, I wish Jesus, uh, but, um, but I do, uh, but like at least to have the biggest impact that he could possibly have, right. You know, like uh, I think that he should challenge, uh, challenge Biden in, uh, in the primaries. Yeah. And, yeah. And he could say, I mean, if the, if, if his whole logic here is, I want to uh, get people thinking about a third party or or recognize that both of these parties are not serving their interest. I mean, he get, since he knows he's not going to win, he could just run where he's going to get the most attention and then just say, hey, you know, I am running in the Democratic primary. But, you know, just to let you know, uh, this is not a good party. <laughs> you know, this is, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, we need to start thinking about a third party. And then maybe that message would travel a little bit farther. I mean, if it's all about. If it's all rhetorical, if it's all getting a message out there, why not? Why not just do that, you know? You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument. To access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights, all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more. Go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with don't be foolish. <laughs>